Good morning, Facebook Live. I'm gonna wait just a second as some people join on today. I am out walking. It feels amazing. The sun is not shining, but oh my goodness, the temperature is awesome for those that are out walking and biking. I've passed a few bikers and I've seen several walkers this morning. There are a lot in this downtown area. But as you join on, oh my goodness, this is gonna be amazing. It is awesome and I wanna give a shout out to Sheila Blathers because she was the one that suggested I title this series of walking in the morning and talking to you all on Facebook, walking with wisdom with Robin, because we're, we're in Holy Spirit and the word and the Lord, amen. And we're looking at our self image that is 2 Corinthians 3.18 as we're being transformed by glory to glory from one degree of splendor to another, as we behold the glory of God by the spirit of the Lord, amen. And so today, oh my goodness, today is massively awesome because we're ending 2020 and we're going into 2021. And listen, this year is a reflection of your self-image. So for those who say 2020 was an absolutely horrific year, you have to look at the good things that happen. You have to look at the goodness of God. And I wrote that on my recent blog post on tableit.org, small things that turn into something that when you take those small things that could have been negative, you turn it by having a mindset that first of all, God is good, and second of all, that God is working all things to your good, amen. And so today, God wants me to talk about peace, shalom, and we're talking about the mind and the body, and just FYI, because I do have many message in me about group coaching sessions and about individual sessions since I started this series, and please message me, they are absolutely phenomenal. And for those that do group coaching sessions, I've already got 15 recorded group coaching in a series for my new book, which are not just in the new book, but are, but are a supplementation to the new book. Because there's many things I do in group coaching surrounding the new book that's not actually in the new book, but that's about it. So message me, amen. But this is what God wants me to talk about to you today. Peace, shalom in Hebrew, the root word actually means restitution, restoration, being made whole. And so we're looking at reconciliation because 24 seven, your mind, which is thoughts, words, and images that tell you what your condition is, who you are, what you are, how you are, and the language of your body is emotion. So 24 seven, these are trying to reconcile and land on the same page. And it would be like rolling dice and you have two die and you want to roll them and they land on doubles. That's what you want with the mind and the body. They're trying to reconcile 24 seven what is going on in your life. And so if you have memories in the subconscious that are packed inside of your body, in those receptors, you can feel out of sorts when they're unpacked and those memories become driven memories, which is your emotions, your emotions, okay? So 24 seven, your mind and body are trying to reconcile and the place where we reconcile into having a well-balanced, sound mind, 2 Timothy 1, 7, is when we have peace, shalom. When we have peace, we don't only have it in our mind, but we also have it in our body. We feel that. And so what does peace feel like? And we're going to look at this briefly through the avenue of boundaries. What does peace look like? And I write about this, which I'm going to tell you in the book at his feet in chapter four boundaries and it came from a different angle than henry cloud i went to the late 1990s i went to dr henry cloud's workshops in birmingham metro because of being a psychotherapist but also i was at the point of wanting to end my life i had a suicide plan and i wanted to end my life i was very depressed and i went to that session and those boundaries teachings actually saved my life. And I didn't wanna give up on life anymore. And I learned I had to set boundaries with other people. And so, and at his feet, the boundaries teaching is totally different than Dr. Cloud's. And it's all about protecting the anointing. So it looks at the avenue of Adam in the Garden of Eden. Eden means delight. So when God formed man, he created a framework, a picture frame to put man in. And that picture frame was Eden and Eden means delight. And so that picture frame is the boundaries. And Adam was to guard and attend the garden. 
his relationship with God. Because as long as he guarded and tended the garden, his face was towards God and he experienced God's delight. That is what peace feels like. Now, if we use other vocabulary words to describe it, it's feeling surreal, it's feeling tranquil, it's feeling relaxed, it's feeling like you can breathe, it's feeling light. Those are other synonyms that I would most likely use with other people as it relates to feeling God's peace. But now this is the thing, saints of God, because God wants you to end 2020 and going into 2021 with his peace, his delight. And some of you need to learn how to set up boundaries. So walking with wisdom today, oh my goodness, you get a massive gold nugget and you get to learn how to set boundaries. And I talk about this in my book again at his feet, but also I'm going to bring in a little bit about God's name, Jealous, and Godly Jealousy, which is also chapter seven at his feet, and about protecting covenant. And for you women that are married out there, for you men that are married, this will be good. And also for your children, and I'll give you two instances about setting boundaries to protect that covenant. Because if that peace that Jesus Christ came to bring you in John 14, 27, gets disturbed, your mind and your body are just gonna be out of whack. And you're going to be looking to the things of this world to appease your soul, your self-image, and it's going to reflect your self-image in the area of lack, and you're never gonna feel good enough, you're always gonna feel deficient, and you're never gonna be satisfied. So this boundary technique is something that you can implement and love, and I do this technique with my individual clients to teach them how to set up boundaries. So let me just stop for a minute because I'm just so excited and I'm walking too. And I just wanna make sure that I don't get distracted and be able to give you what God has given me. And so let's look at boundaries and let's look at peace, let's look at shalom. And so when someone is wanting to argue with me, I know that it is their reflection of who they believe they are and they are hypnotized. Remember the stronghold of the enemy is hypnosis. And we see this demonstrated also in Song of Solomon where we see the Shulamite in Song of Solomon 6, and I did it on a teaching, on my teachings, on my other YouTube channel, Robin Corrigato. I think it was the last teaching that I did. I brought in that Song of Solomon 6, and where all of the people that had come against the Shulamite, they're now saying, oh, the light that's upon you is like the sun. You're as beautiful as the moon. Now, Jesus is compared to S-U-N, but he's also S-O-N of God, right? But all through scriptures, Jesus is compared to the S-U-N. And as long as our eyes are on Jesus, our self-image, 2 Corinthians 3.18, as we behold the glory of God through the word with Jesus Christ, by the power of Holy Spirit, shalom, peace, delight, with an unveiled face, we go from glory to glory. And so the interesting thing about the moon is it reflects the light of the sun. So the part that is facing the sun is lit up, but the part that is not is dark. And so we can liken the dark side of the moon as reflecting things that are not faced on beholding the glory of God, of his truth, of who you are, the reality of what the word says about you. And so when you don't, when you do not set boundaries and you don't walk in power, love, and a sound mind, you're going to accept the false realities of other people and what they believe and their own issues of their own soul. And so a technique I use with those people is called broken record. And you, they might say the same thing over and over and over. And I usually generally come back, be at peace, all is well. Be at peace, all is well. Well, Robin, I don't like what you said or what you posted. I disagree with you. That is this, that is that. Be at peace, all is well because they're trying to reflect their own insecurities upon your self-image. And you have to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and you have to know God is good. He is working all things to your good. So it doesn't matter where that person is at that moment in their life. And you pray for them, of course, but you have to set the boundaries because boundaries 
keep you in that shalom, that protection. Now, let me give you a couple of instances where I've used boundaries as it relates to godly jealousy for my marriage. And of course, those women that know me know that I will step up at any moment and I will let any woman know if you are inappropriately acting in an unlovely way, ungodly way towards my husband that is of this world. You know, I have no problem with that. Well, I had to set that boundary with a man that was being inappropriate and he's not going to watch this video. He doesn't do any of my YouTubes, my Facebook, so he's not going to see this. But I want to give you an example of where I set a boundary with this man. About a week and a half ago, Rich and I were working out, and we are pretty decent friends. We've had coffee with this man. We have a pretty decent relationship. We talk about the Lord. Well, there are still some things of this world that are in this man because of his own insecurities. Because of his own insecurities and where he is in his self-image, having one woman is not enough for him. He has the need, because of his insecurity, to probably have more than just one woman. Like, if he had a girlfriend, then maybe another girlfriend. And I'm setting it up for what he said to my husband in front of me, so you can understand. And when you look to the world to uh, get your sufficiency in, you will always feel insufficient. And you will either spend all your money, you will jump from friendship to friendship, or you'll just keep going from meeting to meeting and trying to seek satisfaction, but you'll never get it because your eyes are not on Jesus Christ. And so as Rich and I were talking to him, this man says, as Rich was trying to explain something, he was like, hey, so-and-so. And then the man interrupted him and he said, oh, you're gonna tell me about your girlfriend? And I was like, dear, with the headlights on, and I was like, you do not say that in the name of Jesus Christ. You are gonna have a battle on your hands if you say that in front of me. Don't ever say that again. And then I told him later, I said, let me tell you what you did, what you said about insinuating that my husband would have a girlfriend while married to me was disrespectful to him. But it was not only disrespectful to him, but it was disrespectful and distasteful to me as a woman. I've never had that done before. And so, of course, when I set that boundary and confronted it, and that's what you have to do with boundaries, is you cannot wait. You have to confront. And there are so many, I've seen so many marriages that are in trouble because they do not have those godly boundaries where godly jealousy protects covenant. Okay, I have a law degree. And I know a lot about law. I've been a psychotherapist, so I have the benefit, thank you, Jesus, to have both professions as it relates to knowledge, wisdom, understanding under my belt. And so my son has been the victim of many criminal activities, and it is a criminal that is a felon already. He's a felon. He has 40 convictions, and he has tormented my son and his wife. And, and I am worried about my grandchildren. And I worry every day. I don't worry every day. I, I, I take that back. I don't worry every day. I put it in the hands of Jesus Christ. And I've given my son the dreams that God has given me about him and about how to handle the matter. And just to guard the peace, but to keep the boundaries up. Well, I had talked to the appropriate people in order to get enforcement of my son already making several reports of these activities. And that nothing had been done yet. I had done that about last Monday. Well, Nothing got done and things were continuing. Well, on Wednesday, I know I keep saying well. Well, on Wednesday, I heard about another incident that was deplorious. It was just unbelievable what this man had done to my son's family. And so I called the authorities and I was not pleasant. I was Mama Bear. And I told them, I know the law, I know you have a duty, and I know you're not doing the duty. And this man has 40 convictions and nothing is being done. And he's got mental problems. I want to know what's going to be done. Well, in the mail that day, I got Beth Oswalt's card. And in the card was a little charm for a bracelet. And it said, Mama Bear. It said, Mama Bear. And I talk about this in At His Feet in God's Firewall. I mean, not, and At His Feet, the book, At His Feet, chapter seven, jealousy. And I'm saying all of that because 
God has so many plans for you in 2021, but you have to walk in wisdom and you have to set boundaries. And when you do, you're going to have peace. You're going to have shalom and you're going to know your God's delight. God bless you. And I pray knowledge, wisdom, and understanding over you and that you know that you are God's delight and that you set godly boundaries. You guard and tend your garden, the relationship we ha that you have with God through Jesus Christ by the power of Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Early happy new year.